When it comes to big year and review stories happening here in Canada, one of the biggest stories, aside from COVID-19 of course, has been dealing with China. And we see Canadians are increasingly frustrated with the authoritarian Chinese Communist Party regime of Xi Jinping. They're seeing what's really going on there. More and more news stories are making them think, hold on a second, do we really want to cozy up to this nation? Or do we want to do more to decouple from China, to distance ourselves from that nation, and to stop that rising global superpower from bringing us more into their orbit, and from allowing them to have even more leverage over us? Lots of people were frustrated with the Two Michael story, uh, seeing the story about the young tennis player seemingly being disappeared for a bit after she made an allegation of sexual assault uh, against a former Chinese Communist Party senior ranking official. All of these things are causing more and more people to wake up, and public opinion in Canada is against China more than ever. And now's the opportunity to talk more about things that we can do uh, to make sure that they do not have further leverage against us in the years, in the decades ahead, because this really is about the future stability of Canada. Now, one thing we can definitely do is something that most of our allies are actually calling on us to do, whether it's the United States or the UK, which is to ban Huawei, to say no to that company from playing a role in helping devise our 5G infrastructure grid. I think that's the, the big obvious one. There's some other uh, smaller, somewhat more technical issues that really need to be talked more amongst the general public like the fact that we need to put a ban on state-owned enterprises from being able to purchase Canadian firms, particularly firms of a sensitive nature. There's been a lot of talk about this because China goes out and their, their state-owned enterprises, which are uh, public sector companies that are companies that are controlled by the Chinese government, they go out and they try and buy various different assets around the world. I think a lot of people would be surprised to see just how much China owns around the world. And we got to say no to them being able to do that here in Canada because they're bidding on various projects, they're trying to purchase things. The Trudeau government actually recently rejected two bids that they uh, did trying to buy corporations here. I think it's good that the government made those decisions and let's hope they make more moving forward. But we can also change the laws here and the rules such that the Chinese government just isn't allowed to buy up entities in Canada that are important to us. One other big thing is withdrawing from the Asian Investment Infrastructure Bank. This is an organization that was created by China to kind of be their replacement of things like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. And whatever you think of those global finance operations, those are things that more come from a post-World War II US-led uh, infrastructure where US values and by default Canadian and Western values are ones that are generally driving the conversation. China's saying, uh-uh, we want to redirect the game in our favor. And Justin Trudeau, along with former finance minister Bill Morneau, they actually signed Canada up for that project. But, but what are we doing there? Should we really be a part of something that is trying to uh, redirect things in China's favor? There are various other initiatives that we can be a part of. That China is also a part of many of them, but just aren't led by China, aren't driven by them and by their values. So we got to talk more about heading in that direction. Regardless, lots of action items that are on the table for Canadians to consider because they've made it clear that they're really cautious about the relationship with China. So that's the direction that we got to head in.